an airplane. Yeah, you're going to have a lot nation. of... Let's, um, let's kick off an episode that I think is going to be legendary for a multitude of reasons. Multitude of reasons. One, it's going to be a quick hitter. It might be one minute, it might be ten, who knows. It might even be shorter than this intro. But uh, we, we've committed from day one to bringing you guys an episode every single day. And every, every day doesn't look alike. Some days there's hurricanes, some days there's shows. Some days we're traveling, and today, the big Baba Ganoush, he's returning home from uh, the promised land, Disneyland, so he's probably got some some tricks up his sleeve, he's got some good stuff going on. Uh, be on the lookout, September's going to be a big month for us, but hopefully we do justice with today's episode. As you can see, I'm walking, Cage is at the gate. I have a play, I did research, I have a whole episode lined up, we might roll some of it over to tomorrow. But Cage, where no, do you want to take I want to hear you. I want to hear your play. I want to hear your play right off the bat. But I got to tell you this. After a week of eating, drinking, just eating and drinking. And yeah, there were some rides in there. And there was a mouse, you know, some characters and that kind of stuff. But basically just walking around eating and drinking. It is it is a refreshing thing to hop on here. And sorry about the background noise, folks. But I am in an airport. See you walking. You know, you're, you're, you're the fit one. You're the one who's in shape here. Yeah, man. I got to start doing that myself. I got to do it myself. Today's been one of those days where I felt like nothing has gone right. And let me just put you guys, put this into perspective. So we wanted to do an episode about 20 minutes earlier, do a 30-minute episode. Security is chaos where Cage is. Finally, we decide, all right, I'm ready to go, 6.45 p.m. I go and I find a beautiful bench overlooking a lake to sit down. I sit down, and less than three seconds later, I get bit by a bee. I get stung by a bee on my right calf. Followed by (laughs) two stings. Followed by two stings on my left calf. Followed by a fourth sting on my kneecap. So I'm not saying this is like the Jordan flu game here, but it might be the equivalent because seven minutes later, I'm ready to jump on and it's like nothing even happened to give you guys the best episode ever. So... Dude, well, you're gonna you're gonna kill it because I got screaming babies over here. I got I was just online for security for an hour. I got yelling babies. I'm gonna have announcements made. I'm probably gonna be bored soon. So, I, I, I you're a trooper. It's the Jordan flu game. It's it's those legendary LeBron games where he pulls through adversity and passes I'm, to Danny I'm Green. Walking, I'm you know, walking like, on a cankle. I'm literally walking <laughs> on a cankle. Let's see it. Let's show, feel, show the YouTube people. I feel show it swelling up. I'll take a show picture the... tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your play, man? Now I'm now I'm excited. I want to hear what your play is. So my play, my play be is a... to eat healthy. Eat healthy, maybe diet a little. That's going to be my play going forward. Amazing. Well, make sure that you can eat whatever you want as long as, as long as it has no carbs. So you could have 44 provolone cheeses, but as long as there's no bread, you're, you're off the races. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Um, my play is out of the book of Mr. Lior. So I was thinking, you know, what's going on in today's market, right? And... We talk about cards that, you know, pop one, pop two, low pop versus rookie cards. And there's a parallel cage that I've loved from day one. And it hasn't gotten a ton of love. But when you make these kinds of investments, but I'm going to put investments in quotes because to me it's more of a bet that this parallel is going to eventually become an important parallel in the game. It's the black velocity parallel. The optic black velocity parallel. Now, you can get a rookie version of that, and there's Trey Young PSA 10 listed for 10K. But there's also other cards. Like there's a Russell Wilson 2018 non rookie year PSA 10 out of 25 black velocity. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card. And it's a two, three, four hundred dollar card. Now we're sitting here thinking, you know, it's not a non rookie. What makes this card special? But it goes back to that episode that we had with Lior. And how counterintuitive it actually is that non-rookie cards of these low-pop parallels actually become sought after. And this happened with a ton of different parallels, but it hasn't happened with Black Velocity. It's happened with Kaboom, Color Blast, all of these other ones. But it hasn't happened with Black Velocity. Black Velocity has always been my favorite. Not only that, I know how hard Optic is to grade. So that's another thing. You're what are they numbered see. out of? They're less than 100, right? What are they, 49, 59? What are the black velocity out of? 30. Basketball is out of 39. Football is out of 25. Woof. That's a limited card. 
It's a limited card and it's a beautiful card. So that's my, I would take a look at whatever sport you're, you're considering. doesn't have to be rookie. You can find some Kawhi Black Velocity, whether it's in a Clippers jersey, Raptors jersey for under 400 bucks in a PSA 10. Same with the Russell Wilson. I think it's a very interesting play. And if you want to go rookie Black Velocity, I don't blame you either. I think it's you're going to be paying a little bit more. Like a Jaron Jackson's 2000 bucks, 2500 Something to take a look at. I like it. We talk about scarcity, so it's fun when we get to talk about these people who are basically, you know, the uh, the, the the big names, the ones you know controlling funds, the ones doing the big money in the hobby. They look for scarcity. I'm gonna go another way, um, and I'm gonna give two things here. And we get the benefit of doing the collectible episode, guys. If you haven't listened to it, you know, it was yesterday's episode. We, you know, we released them uh, Sunday. This way, they're available Monday morning. Uh, you know, reactionary to the secondary market, the trading the week before. Gives you a little bit of uh, insight into, you know, how, how auctions that are ending will impact, uh, you know, the secondary market trading. But I'm, I like it because I'm able to actually go through some of the data that's on there. And even though something might be expensive or, you know, not priced right in the secondary market for fractional, it lets me look at some cards. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Now we're getting into some, some interesting territory. You just brought up Kawhi, right? If you can grab a Black Velocity Kawhi, that's great. But one of the one of the things that was on there is this bucket of Kawhi Prism cards. So basketball has started to, you know, it, it, it bottomed, and you can see some of the iconic pieces starting to pick it their way back up because basketball is right on the horizon, right? Football is too, but basketball is not far behind it this year. So guys like Kawhi, however, who are going to be out of sight, out of mind because of the injury, and they're not going to start the season right away. They're not going to they're not going to be healthy to start the season. That's a bargain, right? That's a guy who has already got the hardware. He's already won the championships. He's already you know won. He's already got the you know the the, the trophies. Um, he's young. And you're talking about 2012 Prism. You know, people are buying guys like Bradley Beal. People are buying guys like, um, you know, uh, Clay, Anthony Davis. Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. Well, Clay and Anthony Davis have already won championships. But somebody like Bradley Beal is a great comparison, right? Or Kemba Walker or whoever it is. Same year. I'm just bringing up guys from 2012 Prism. L- Lillard. Beal. Beal's a good example. Lillard, too. Lillard's never won anything, right? But, but Kawhi has multiple times, right? Kawhi is one of those guys that's pretty bankable, but he's out of sight, out of mind. And one of the things in collectible was Kawhi. And I'm like, all right, that's not exactly cheap, but because obviously it IPO before he got injured, but his cards on eBay are cheap now, right? Whether it's the black velocity that you like or 2012 prism, but the specific play that I was looking at was we talked yesterday about how the $36,000 valuation market value for the silver basket of eight, you know, the tray, the Zion, the Cha, and the Luca was expensive. But take it from somebody who last year saw the run-up on Trey Silver cards before the season. I know it's not numbered. I know it's not exactly scarce. It's telling up black velocity. But there are people who over the next week, two, three, drafting football, drafting stuff, you name it, are going to be looking for football quarterbacks. And we looking for Josh Allen. We looking for Justin Herbert, right? And you might be able to trade away your Josh Allen, your Justin Herbert, for a Trey Silver. Right? And yeah, they're not the rarest thing on earth, but they're definitely rarer than the base cards. And these are cards I was selling to people for over $3,000 a piece. They were getting close to $4,000 a piece before last season. And Trey had an incredible season last year. Now, under $1,500. If you're able to, in a Facebook group, probably get one of these $1,300, $1,200, change $1,250 for these Trey Silvers. That's a card, guys. We're looking for ways to make money here, right? We're looking for ways to have an appreciable asset. Something that's going to appreciate. If you're able to get a Trey silver psa 10 that's 12 50 1300 it doesn't have to go to the 3500 or 3000 that it was at before last season before he had that great season for you to make some money on it you get in cheap enough 12 50 1300 and i think starts moving towards 2000 here in 1250 and it goes to 1900 you just made 50 percent of your money it doesn't even have to get to two grand that's some place that i'd be looking now him more so than any of the other guys see luca came down but it hasn't come down as much um, you know, compared to where it was, um, you know, Zion and Zion, and there's a lot of Zion, a lot of Trey. Trey, you don't even think he's the best player on the team. I mean, uh, Z- uh, Ja, I think Trey is. Ja. Yeah, I think Trey is the way to go, man. And I think, he, you know, he improves on last season. I think a lot of people like him. He's got a huge, uh, uh, big enough fan base that will drive that market up. And I think we have an interesting thing here where for the next couple of weeks, people are going to be looking at football. But right after that, boom, basketball happens. So you have the ability to kind of like for the next couple of weeks, Maybe sneak in and grab a decent basketball piece that if you want to, you can flip in the beginning or middle of October right before basketball starts.
we'll we'll wrap with this, guys, and we apologize, but I, you might like it that this is a little bit of a shorter episode. There, out of the four people, uh, Cage mentioned Ja, Zion, and Luca, and really, just if you compare Trey outside of that, you have to remember Curry was a very much a late bloomer in this league, and I believe there's a reason for that. Where guys like Ja and Zion come in and they're already athletically gifted, Trey didn't have that. Luca had six, seven years of professional experience and he had a much stronger physique. I think with a guy like Trey, he's going to improve and hit his prime a little bit later than the other guys as he slowly figures out the NBA, right? He can't trade on or he can't perform just on athleticism like Ja and, and, ja, uh, ja and Zion. But what he has done is he, his IQ has gone up, right? He has a floater in the lane. He doesn't take as many bad shots. And I think this is the season where you could see Trey actually have a better statistical season than Luca. Now, you guys all know I'm a huge Luca guy. But from what I've seen, Trey has improved year over year over year. And guys like him that are a little bit smaller in stature, they have to, you know, get crafty. They have to learn the game. They have to increase their basketball IQ. They have to have a smart shot selection. I think I've seen that from Trey. I saw that a lot in last year's postseason. And I think statistically, individually, Trey has a ton of upside that still hasn't been accessed. Well, the way the game is being played, right, they're not taking away the ability to have offense, right? They're not going to change Steph Curry's game, right? And Trey is modeling his game after that. And what I liked about him the most during the postseason, during the run-up, was I like to invest in guys who are the clear-cut number one guy on the team. Right, the number one guy. And we talked about how Cam Reddish, your favorite guy is there, DeAndre Hunter, you know, John Collins, all these guys on the team, they're all role players. players to him. He's clearly, clearly the guy there. He is the alpha on that team, which you know, you you'd you like to make an argument that John Morant isn't. You know what I mean? I mean, Zion still has Brandon Ingram. I mean that's a one A, one B. Who knows? You know, I mean I love Zion, I think he's great. Luca's clear cut alpha. I think Trey is too. And if you're going to start putting your money somewhere, that's what you want to do. You want to be betting on the guy who is the clear-cut guy for that franchise, right? As Cage begins the board, I, I will save all of my topics from today. We'll move them to tomorrow. One I will touch on. I was having a conversation with a friend. And August, Cage, can you believe it? It's with today's August 30th. Can't believe right? it. So Can't believe it, man. Can't it's a long it. month, right? <laughs> we had... Yeah, but if it feels like it felt at some points this this month felt like it was a week long, and at some point this month felt like it was a year long. So it's just it's nuts how that works, you know. It it really really does, and I'll tell you, a lot of you guys out there listening are card rich. And I was talking to a friend, and I was like, you know, let's take a step back. Why do we even do what we do? All right, we love the community, right? Great, but you know, we also love freedom. And I urge you guys to remember, as you're collecting cards, as you're sitting on profit, as you're doing well, remember that the whole point of investing and making money is to improve your lives, is to be happier, is that your family and the people around you have a better life. So I wanted to have like that kind of public service announcement today because I think sometimes we miss the forest for the trees. Remember that as you're sitting on all these profits, we're heading into the rest of the year. You, you do this kind of worst case scenario. If everything goes to zero, will I still be happy at the end of the year? And if you are profitable, if you're sitting on a three five hundred dollars five hundred thousand dollar collection, or even you've made twenty thousand this year, you have peace of mind and you're not panic selling if there is something that happens. I would like to remind myself of that because yeah, we love cards, we love the community, but I think we love freedom and happiness even more. And a lot of us have had a lot of success. And I wouldn't want you to keep chasing, keep pursuing. I think now is the time to be an intelligent investor, realize that you are in profit, and maybe consider taking some money off the table so that if things do hit the fan, now you have cash to reinvest at significant discounts. And I if like it doesn't it. hit the fan, you're still lever you're still invested. Well, listen, the, the message there is also don't look back, right? Take some money off the table. Take some profit off the table. You're in you're in a win there. And don't be me and look back and say, wow, I shouldn't have done that. I, if I would have sold it now, I would have done so much better. Take your wins, right? That way you're, you know, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up. You're protecting yourself in case the rest of this, in case there is like, like Andrew's talking about a, a, a drop, right? You take it, some is, of your, is a vacation with your table. family not a win, Cage? A hundred percent. Listen, and you know what? I, I, my spending money for this was money on cards that I sold. 
at the East Coast National. And I got and I got I got some left. I didn't even spend it all. So we're doing good, man. hundred percent. I'm living what you're preaching. So I love, love it. it. Have a safe flight. We'll see you in New York when you land. Luca Nation, we appreciate you guys being paced this last week with this episode. You know, we, we've made a commitment and we we believe that we stick to our commitments hundred percent. This one is uh I'm walking around my neighborhood, cages boarding a flight. It is what it is, and we'll be back with you guys tomorrow. 100% guys. Thank you. Thanks for sticking with us, Luca Nation. We'll talk to you guys soon.